Morning guys, welcome to another quick video about some work I'm going to be doing on the camper van. It's quite a quick modification this, but it's one that's going to make life a bit easier for us. I'm going to be fitting a relay today so I can isolate um, my power supply to my inverter, the 12 volt feed, which is essentially going to mean I can switch that inverter on and off remotely from a switch. Now you can get remotes uh, specifically made for inverters. Um, they do cost around 30 to 40 pounds. They quite often are brand specific though. And the inverter I have, a Mercury, which is a 600 watt uh, pure sign inverter, which I'm quite happy with, but I can't seem to find a remote for it. Um, they're generally wired in um, via an RJ45 or an Ethernet connector, um, those uh, remotes just to make them a bit awkward. Um, I potentially could make my own cable, but I don't think it's be worth it. I think the easiest solution is to um, just basically fit a, an isolator in the main feed. That means I can leave the inverter switched on all the time um, and just switch it on and off with a, a switch I've in this gap here that's going to go in in a minute. Um, and it's just going to make life a bit easier at the moment. I've got to open up the cupboard um, down with a fuse board is and stuff like that to get to the inverter. Got to reach around the side of it and put the switch on and off when I'm using it or not. Um, not the biggest uh, chore in the world, but it's just going to make things a bit more professional, a bit easier to use. Now, um, this is the second video that's gone up from some ones I'm doing some quick work in the van. Hi guys, sorry about that, my uh, gimbal went flat. So yeah, the one from last week was about me fitting an isolator, which is going to be using a lot of the similar components um, that this is going to be using to isolate or switch off the, um, the inverter. Now I'm going to be doing a few other videos after this, one about fitting a switch that will control my 240 uh, volt electric heaters for the, the hot water. Uh, so if you want to check out that one, you can actually control that via a 12 volt switch. There's a special way of doing it um, using a special relay. So if you want to check that out, they'll probably be going up um, over the next few videos or something like that um, to do with the, the van related ones that is. Um, and then after that, I think I've got one more to do, which um, I want to fit a relay, which will disconnect my solar panel from the leisure battery and put it onto um, uh, the kind of main battery at the front. So I'll be showing you how you do that as well. Um, now this is a switch, as I've already got um, one on the back here, which uh, controls the kind of isolator for the main fuse board. So when I switch that, everything in the van is gonna go off. Um, and I've got all these fuses, I've got to use them um, to kind of wire up now as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll fit this system now, I'll try and put some video clips and pictures of the things I've done to fit it so you know what to do. Um, and then if you want to do it yourself, you can go ahead and do it. This is kind of a, a workaround. If you don't have a remote uh, switch specifically designed for your inverter, it will allow you to do it kind of a slightly different way just by cutting the feed off to it. So stuff we need basically is we need some cable, which um, I've kind of just been making my own really. I've got some uh, 2.5 mil um, cable here, which I wrap with insulation. Um, and put some spay connectors on the end. So that is gonna be the trigger circuit. There's gonna be no real power going down that, to be honest. It's just a slight 12 volt feed to switch the relay on and off. So you don't have to be over the top with uh, what you use for that, as long as it's decent kind of quality and gauge. Um, I've got a 100 amp relay, which, oh, sorry, 100 amp fuse, which is gonna be going right in by the battery where the cable for the inverter comes off. So it's gonna be fused. I've not actually ever had this um, main cable fuses about this inverter. The inverter's got fuses built in, um, but the actual feed itself isn't fused. So I'm gonna be fitting this to that cable just to make it extra safe. Um, now the business end of it is gonna be this huge relay. Now this is a 200 amp relay. If you compare it to a normal relay you find in a car, um, you can see the massive difference in size. Um, this is gonna allow me to put a 12 volt feed from the switch via these terminals here, uh, the small ones, and then by disconnecting the cable to my inverter, I can put it on one end on here, and the other end here, this connector then will then go onto the inverter. I've already disconnected the cables from the inverter, and luckily they already have big spade connectors on the end of them, so I've already got the wiring from one end. Just need to make up a bit of a cable to go from this to the inverter. Um, run a cable down from where my switch is going to be, just below the cupboard, you can't really see, down to uh, where the relay is going to sit. I'm going to then have to put one end of this 
um, this connector onto an, an earth or a neutral point on the van. Um, I've got a big neutral buzz bar down there that I tend to use. And the other end is gonna have to be coming up to a switch here. And that switch is also gonna have to have a 12 volt feed coming to it. I do have a 12 volt feed now to this switch. So I'll probably just be able to nab that and use it. I've got a 12 volt feed that I'm using to control the relay for um, the isolator. Uh, this one here, which switches the electric off. So um, I'll get uh, go ahead now, fit it all. I'll catch up with you a bit later when it's all done. Um, if there's any important bits I need to put in, I'll put them in between. Otherwise, it's just going to be some clips, uh, some footage, some B-roll, um, and a bit of annotation if it helps you. All the bits I use in this um, will be in the description. So if you want to go ahead and use them, they will be affiliate links uh, if I can. So if not, um, just have a look. Anyway, a few of the bits came off eBay anyway. So all the links will be going up there if you want to follow this route. Um, yeah, I'll put a bit of information about the switches as well, how you wire it up. Um, that will help you if you do get the same switches. I'll crack on now and I'll catch up with you a bit later. <laughs> We're slowly getting there. It's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, I've already been down there now and tidied up the fuse board, done a few other things down and worked out some ways of wiring it up. Um, I've pulled off the main feed from the battery. What it's gonna be doing now is it's gonna be going onto this cable that I've made up. And I thought I'd just put this segment in just to show you um, the cable I've made up basically. Um, so this is the business end of it. We've got this 100 amp fuse um, in this fuse holder here. Um, the lie from the battery, the spade terminal, which is now down by the fuse board, which I was just talking about, is going to go onto this one here, through the fuse, around here into this big spade connector, which is going to be going into um, that side of the relay. The other side is obviously then going to have a link from there to the fuse board. Um, and what I've also got is I've taken a link out of it, uh, fused as well, onto this one here. That's going to be running all the way down this um, cable um, onto my switch. And then when the switch switches it, it's going to put that power back down it onto this blue cable. And that is going to be going onto um, the spade terminal on the relay. Now, all I have to do then is earth and put that other spade connector to a neutral. Um, and then that's it. That's pretty much done. That will work. Yeah, so that's that bit done. I thought I'd just show off that cable and how it's kind of going to work for you so you can see it a bit better. Um, I'm going to continue fitting it now, screw it up. Next time I'll catch up with you will be um, when I'm testing it. So probably another hour's work for me here. I'll catch up with you in a bit and we'll see if it works. I've got pretty much all the insulation on it done now. I've got the relay down in the um, electricity cover type thing by the uh, fuse board. Um, so I've actually got two big relays down there now, one for the isolator and one for this inverter I'm doing now. Um, I've run the cable up to the switch and I've also cut the main feed to that relay that used to be the main feed going straight to the inverter. I've cut it by the battery and I've put a, a big inline fuse in there, that 100 amp fuse. Um, so that's pretty much all done really. Um, I've tested it, it does work. Um, if people use or are going to use the same switches I've got, um, I'll just quickly run through the terminals on them. On one side of the switch you have three uh, spade connectors. Now the two that are closest together on that side, on the side there's three, they are your spade connectors that are actually going to switch your device on and off. The way I'm doing this is I'm just using that to switch a power supply on and off that goes to uh, the relay or a kind of 12 volt source that goes to the relay. So it doesn't matter which way you put those um, connectors around, but those two that are closest together are your um, your switching one. Um, what you then got is all the other spade connectors do the LED. So on the other side of the, the switch where you've just got the two, re uh, two spade connectors on their own, uh, that's spaced uh, right either ends of the switch. 
that is one of the LEDs. Now I'm probably going to be using that LED because it's not quite as bright as the other one. These switches do have two LEDs on them for some reason. Um, but all you have to do is somehow get a power supply to one of those spade connectors when the switch is activated. It's quite easy to do. If you put a power supply or a permanent power supply to the switch, the other side of that spade connector where you're going to connect your line down to your relay, that will only be live when the switch is activated. So you want to take a T from that and put it onto one of the connectors on the other side of the switch, just where the two connectors are there, put it on one of those. The other end, you need to put an earth on it or a neutral so that the electricity can kind of travel through the uh, the LED into back to neutral. If it doesn't work when you do it, it's an LED, so just swap the connectors around and it should work. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you um, wire these switches up. Now, I'll probably just show off um, it to you. I'll have to kind of move you down a bit so you can see. Um, I'm still working on the panel a bit, so I've got one of the switches taken out. Now, this one here is my isolator. So that basically, like I say, cuts all the power supply to my fuse box. So you can see when I switch that off, it's actually switching the um, extra lights I've got up here. Um, and then when I do this, when you should be to hear a beep, that is the uh, inverter switching on and off. And I've actually got it wired up by the switches um, so that if I have the main isolator off, then I won't get any power to that inverter. Everything is dead when this main isolator is off. So if I switch that back on and then use this one, we can see that it's um, we're starting to work and we're getting our power back on it. So that, yeah, that's it really. That's as simple as that is. Um, this panel is gonna go down in this little gap here, which you can see um, a bit later. So if you watch the last video from this series, it will just make it kind of a bit easier to understand. I've got to have a look at these switches now. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to use the LEDs on them. There's a lot of wiring extra to use those LEDs. Um, they're quite big switches. It's quite easy to tell whether they're still left on. So I might just be making it more simple and not using them. Hope you found this one useful. Hope it's going to um, mean that if you don't have a relay or so if you don't have a remote switch for your um, for your inverter, you'll be able to fit one this way and just make it a bit more of a professional um, setup. Uh, allow you to switch your inverter off in a bit easier way than having to jump in the cupboard or wherever you've got it installed. Um, thanks for watching this one. Um, I'll catch up with you on the next one um, for the van, which will probably be revolving around fitting that um, relay that allows me to switch my electric heaters on and off. I've got to do a bit of work to that first because I've got to fit a way of um, having multiple plugs 12 volt plugs off the inverter so um, that will be um, something you have to do before that i'll catch up with you on that one and thanks for watching this one mm -hmm.